Hello and welcome back. So, in the last episode we built a nighttime scene, but you'll notice from the main menu if we click on Start Game, it actually takes us to the daytime scene. So to fix that, um, open up the night scene, go to Build Settings, and then de delete the daytime scene and add the night scene by clicking Add Open Scenes. Um, so once that, once you do that, everything should transition correctly between the main menu and in the scene. Um, if we click on build and run, that'll create a standalone executable, and so the player can play in full screen, like this. Um, but once they get into the game, there's no easy way to exit. Like, if, if they hit escape, it doesn't do anything. Um, they can back out with, like, control shift escape, and then kill the application. Um, but we don't want them to have to do that, so we're going to build an in-game pause menu in this episode. So to do that, um, the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the canvas, and I'm just going to call this canvas underscore pause menu. Like that. And then uh, I'm just going to delete everything off of it. And then right click to create UI button. And I think I'm yeah, I, I think I'm going to move mine off to the left a little bit. And I, and we could also put this on a panel. So let's just let's just play with things and see what what, what looks good. Maybe something like that. Actually, I'm not going to use the panel. I'm just going to have a minimalistic menu. Um, so I'll just have one button called button underscore quit. Change the text to quit. And I think I'm just actually... Um, I'm going to go back into the main menu. I kind of like the style of this button. So what I'm going to do is go into the canvas find that button, and then drag that into our prefabs folder, like that. Uh, you know what? It, it would actually be easier um, delete that, and then just take this whole canvas and drop that in, and then uh, go back to scenes, night, uh, don't save and then d delete the pause menu canvas and just dr drag in this whole canvas that we just put in the prefabs folder. And now I'm going to call this one canvas underscore pause. Like that. And I'm going to change start game to resume and the second start game to end game. And then change the text on both of those. Resume. And quit. Let's see what that looks like. Not bad. Um, I think I'm just going to center, center those on the screen. Like that. And drag them up a little bit. Like that. I think that looks fine. So now we need to make those work. So I'm going to go to scripts. And we already have this menu control script. So we can just copy that onto the canvas. Actually, um, I think it would make more sense to put it in the management folder. So go ahead and create empty menu controller. Drag that onto there. And then we're going to attach the buttons to the menu controller. Um, let's open that up and make sure we have the functions we need. End game and resume. So for end game, we can use quit. Easy enough. 
Um, so let's drag this menu controller onto the end game function. And then menu control quit. So now that now that button is correctly linked to this function. And now we're gonna need um, a separate function for pausing and resuming the game. So let's just start with resume. Public void resume. And for now we're just gonna print resume to the console. And I'm going to have a public boolean value is paused. And by default, that'll be false. And when we resume the game, is paused equals false. And then we should also have a function for pause the game. Public void pause is paused equals true. And we might as well print something to the console. Print paused. And now we want to call these functions. Um, resume obviously should be called by this button. So drag menu controller onto here. Menu control resume. And now when do we want to call the pause function? Um, I think it would make the most sense to call that when the user hits escape. So to listen for the escape key, we can put that in the update function. If input dot get key down, key code escape. Um, when the user presses the the escape key, we're just going to call the pause function like that. Um, so now let's let's just see if those two functions work for for printing resume and paused. All right, all right. So we called resume that worked, and I'm I'm hitting escape and it's printing paused. So we're getting some functionality out of this. Now when we pause the game, what do, what do we want to happen? Um, obviously the game needs to freeze. Um, so to do that, we can just do time dot time scale equals zero. And on resume, we can say time dot time scale equals one. Um, we also need to display the cursor or hide the cursor. Um, when they hit escape, you you should be able to see the mouse. Um, you, but if um, on the on the FPS controller. If, if lock cursor is selected, the player won't be able to see the mouse. It just disappears. So, um, when we when we publish the game, we definitely want lock cursor to be enabled. They, they shouldn't see the cursor moving across the screen. They should only see the reticle in the center of the screen. Um, so, to prepare for that, we can we can lock cursor now. So go ahead and apply that to the prefab. And the menu control will need a reference to this FPS controller. Um, so we need to be able to contact the FPS controller script called first person controller. If you, if you try to type that first person, you, um, uh, Modern Develop doesn't see it automatically, and that's because you have to import the correct library using Unity Engine dot uh, I think it's standard assets. What's it called? Crash controller, events, event system, internal, play mode test, profiling, rendering, scripting. I don't see it. So I'm going to open up the first person controller script. Uh, to do that, I hit Control Shift T, and then type first. And this is in the Unity Standard Assets dot Characters dot First Person Controller namespace. So let's let's create a using statement using that menu control using 
Unity standard assets dot characters dot first person. All right. So now we can create a variable of type first person controller. Public first person controller. Uh, I'm just going to call it FPS. And now in the menu controller, we can just drag in the FPS controller like that. Save the scene. And now we have a reference to that, so we can we can lock the cursor from this script. So when we resume the game, first person controller dot um, what's that called? Lock. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to check and uncheck this box using box using code, but I don't see a public function for that. Serialized field, private, cursor lock, mouse lock. Okay, so it looks like it's um, encapsulated, encapsulated within this mouse lock function, which is private, meaning we can't access it from menu control, so we need to set that to public. So then we can say fps dot mouse look dot lock cursor equals false. Actually, that that should be true. When 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 we resume the game, hide the cursor, and then when we pause the game, show the cursor. Fps mouse look dot lock cursor equals false. So let's see what that does. We start the game. The cursor is hidden, we hit escape, and the cursor is still hidden. So something's wrong. Alright, so to figure out what's wrong, um, all the mouse lock functions are within this mouse lock script. So let's open that up. Mouse lock. Now that has functions for look rotation, set cursor lock. Uh, that's probably what I should be using to to lock and unlock the cursor. So let's let's update that and see what happens. Menu control. Rather than just setting the value of lock cursor, we're going to call set cursor lock and pass in true. Same thing here for the value of false. Now let's play that and see if it works. Alright, so now we have our cursor back, and then if we hit resume, the cursor disappears. So we're on the right track. Um, we also want to make sure the camera... Actually, I kind of I kind of like how you can look around when it's paused. Um, so I think I'll keep that in there. But then we need to make sure the menu disappears when they hit resume. So to fix that, we need a reference to the menu, which is called canvas pause. So public game object, um, we'll just call this menu, save, and then open up the menu controller in the inspector. And now we have a field for menu, and I'm just going to drag in this entire canvas, save, and then when we when we resume the game, um, canvas, actually what's it called? Uh, menu dot set active equals false. And when we pause the game, menu dot set active is true. So that that should show and hide the menu when we pause and unpause. And um, just to make sure that the cursor always starts off locked, time scale always starts off at 1, and we always start with the menu hidden, I'm going to call this resume function at the very beginning of the game. And so, so that will verify that, that this disappears as soon as the game starts. Alright, we have our working menu. And... Uh, 
if you don't want the camera to move when the menus open, uh, an easy tweak for that is to go into FPS controller and then in the update function um, you could just say if time dot time scale equals zero return and so that way it won't do any of this updating when the game is paused uh, but I think I think I like the way he can rotate when it's paused. So I'm going to cut this video off here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was entertaining. And if you like my channel, please consider subscribing.